5G services are now available to hundreds of millions of users around the world. So today we're talking about one of the most critical aspects of any 5G strategy, monetization and the role of business support systems or BSS. Now to discuss this very important topic, I'm joined by Ericsson's Jason Keane, head of the company's BSS product and solution line. Hi Jason, thanks for joining us. Hey Ray, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. As you mentioned, I'm the head of BSS Systems. So with that, I have uh, responsibility and ownership for the charging and billing functions, the catalog functions, the mediation functions, so the portfolio of Ericsson's BSS, as you know. With BSS, we are the monetization layer to ensure that our customers can continue to capitalize on their B2C investments. And what we see with 5G is the need to move more into the B2B segment that they need more in terms of uh, getting the return on investment that they have from their 5G networks and exploiting more services out of their network to capitalize this revenue. Okay, well, I mean, now is a good time to be talking about all of this because 5G services are already on offer in more than 70 countries worldwide. And all those service providers need the most suitable systems to help them get the best return on their investments. We see uh, actually from the Ericsson Mobility Report you mentioned on the number of live customers, we actually see now the speed of the 5G and the uptake is quicker than it was for 4G, let alone 3G. So we see a massive surge in actually the demand of 5G services. As you mentioned, in Ericsson Mobility Report, we have 160 communication service providers have launched 5G, and there's over 300 smartphones available. The current prediction is by the end of 2021, there'll be over half a billion 5G users. So there's a huge momentum towards 5G. So uh, given this momentum in the market, what are you most excited about? The opportunities, the new experiences, the entirely new ways to do business. There's new revenue gains for service providers in this in this segment in 5G. If we take a look, for example, at our consumer lab report, from an Ericsson point of view, we see that there's a huge opportunity for our customers to get in on and exploit and uh, capture a market share. So what excites me most about this is the opportunity that faces us. From a BSS point of view, and it's key for me in the portfolio investments and developing our offers, that we enable our customers to capture these segments and capture this revenue so that we can all be a part of it. So how are you thinking about the role of BSS as the 5G sector continues to grow? What's top of your mind? So it's an ecosystem play. So what we see is if we take very simply, if you want to you know, enable a 5G service, you want to capitalize on this, you can't just start with BSS. BSS, as I said, is the monetization. It starts with the commercial offer. So when you make a commercial offer, from the commercial offer of saying, I would like to sell this services, from that point of clicking next or clicking go, it's got to go all the way to, to the OSS, to the packet core, to the network, and enable this service in an automatic and meaningful way. We recognize the role of the network developer, the service enabler, and the service creator. Within the BSS space, we've got to expose and allow customers to exploit that. Because the thing we see with 5G at the moment, uh, Ray, is there's a lot of service, a lot of things we can do today, but there's a lot yet to be discovered and there's not yet to be explored. VSS now has to be flexible enough to make sure that we can create the service, we can enable it, and we can charge it in a much, much faster way than we have traditionally. So for that, if we want to create the service, it's got to complete end to end. Now, At a conceptual level, what does this mean for BSS system development? Uh, How do these systems need to evolve? What needs to change? What needs to be supported? There's two parts to it. There is, let's call it the feature or function part of this. This is whereby, if I look at BSS itself, the traditional model of, of monetizing network has been around voice, text, and data, more significantly in data in recent terms. That model will change. Maybe you will still charge a little, but now maybe you charge for use cases. You charge to enable a service. You charge for the service consumption. You charge based on APIs. You charge based on different services. So the actual functional part of BSS much, must become much more dynamic in how it's going to monetize. Maybe we're going to monetize on you know, the mileage that you drive in your car or the, the distance you cover. Maybe we're going to monetize on the, the number of events you have in terms of party events. At the platform or the kind of underlying attributes or non-functional side of it, what we see is we see with 5G, it is massive scale. So the BSS itself at a non-functional level or at a platform level must move more towards being able to scale quickly, dynamically, uh, and actually in an automated way. 
automation in BSS and automation through the end-to-end -end journey is a key enabler of this. So when we're crafting our BSS developments and plans and strategy, we see actually the hyper cloud providers as key with this. And so significant changes that we have to put into BSS and Ericsson are doing it to make sure that A, we can actually monetize, we can create the features that we want to sell, but B, we can support the scale, the resilience and the availability of the platform itself. Okay, so this sounds like a significant evolutionary step. Uh, how can BSS systems help support the broader 5G ecosystem? Because the system scale so quickly is we need to stay open from a, and what I mean by this is if we take a look at the three GPP standards, they are open and defined southbound towards the actual network itself, and that's important. But when I look at the wider ecosystem and the platform, I look northbound in Ericsson, we believe we've also have to have a meaning, meaningful exposure of our APIs. So with this in Ericsson, we are pursuing TM form APIs. So do we recognize that customers want to interact with us in a meaningful and a standard way, such that they could have different vendors, or different partners to interact. As we build our use cases, we test them end to end. So we test from the RAN to the core, to the OSS, to the BSS, to make sure they're fulfilled completely. That's what we see uh, customers will want. They'll want to focus more on the journey than the features itself. Now, at a functional level then, what needs to be considered so that BSS systems are able to support all of these capabilities at scale? The scale you want to achieve at 5G and the speed you want to achieve, you cannot do it manually. You can spend six to 12 weeks developing a new commercial offer. It has to stand up now, it has to be created and it has to be instantiated very quickly. So what we see from a BSS perspective is we have to make sure that our systems support that level of automation, support that immediate capture and standing up of services. We look at ODA, the open design architecture from TM Form, such that we don't bring our customers into an expensive proprietary architecture, but we stay as open as possible. Once we have the standards I mentioned, is service exposure is important. With slicing now, I can create a segment for you on the RAN. I can expose it to a partner, so that partner can deliver their services and can manage that services. Uh, such that they can deliver a profitable business. The CSPs can now make a decision, I don't want to play in that vertical, but I have a partner that can do, they can exploit my network and my assets to do this, I'll get a revenue share from this, and I can grow my business that way. So uh, Jason, can you summarize your vision for how service providers are going to monetize their 5G services? I believe now how CSPs will monetize their 5G services now and in the future is on the use cases on the end-to-end -end enablement of the services. Uh, for example, this is a slice you've set up. In this slice, you can support with correct latency, with correct SLAs, um, a million devices. The cost for those million devices will be whatever, $10 million, whatever the number is. That will be the value proposition they bring. They will bring different attributes like resilience, like availability, like speed, like partners, like collation of services to enable them to monetize 5G. I think this is the mind shift and this is the paradigm shift we have to see in the industry. The monetization of purely voice, text and data is gone. We see that from our BSS layer, we have to expose out and allow partners and others to actually scale and grow the business to give revenue uh, back to the actual operators themselves. So uh, a lot of developments in the market. Uh, what are you actually seeing in terms of your uh, customers, Jason? Uh, what are they looking at? What are they doing to prepare for the scale and challenges that 5G is bringing? Telstra, uh, which is an Australian-based uh, operator, they have embraced digitization. They had started with an onboarding uh, process that was many minutes to onboard a customer. And what they've done is they've introduced a cloud-native solution from Ericsson called our DXP, our digital experience platform, whereby they've been able to cut that from many minutes to a matter of seconds, thereby increasing the speed of offers and increasing the speed of commercialization of their network assets. So it's starting there from a digitization. We see many customers as well. The second customer in terms of scale, what we see is we take Vivo Brazil. Vivo Brazil is an operator with 100 million subscribers across the country. Part of this uh, deployment is that we make sure that they have a resilient solution such that when do they enable service and deploy services, it stays up. What we're deploying in there with Ericsson is an eight site active active G redundant solution that makes sure that when they move to 5G and they are going to 5G, that they will have the scale and the resilience to support the services. 
So uh, a great deal to consider here, Jason, uh, and a lot to be discussed. And that's why we'll be holding a series of discussions here on Telecom TV about 5G monetization. We'll be launching a special series of programs featuring some of your colleagues during which we'll dig a little deeper into many of these topics. Now, the series is called Let's Talk About 5G Monetization. Uh, what can our viewers expect from these programs? We have many conversations around this topic. This is new and uncharted territory for us all. We have our own views, we have our plans, and we'd like to hear from your viewers what they face, what they see. There'll be a series of panel discussions we're going to ask viewers to engage with these discussions, to explore what options we have, what it means. Uh, from an Ericsson point of view, we're going to bring SME, subject matter experts. We're going to consider really the topic of monetization, because this is what BSS is about, from three main segments. The, the product view, like what, what's important for what we're planning, like what we're building. The customer view, what we see our customers. Ericsson's a huge BSS installed customer base. What we see from our customers, the questions being asked and what opportunities they have and we believe we have to evolve. And of course, the market view, what the market, what our research tells us and what the analysis tells us is going to happen. So you talk there about uh, input and conversations. Uh, what does this actually mean then? Will there be more than just panel discussions? We would solicit your viewers to have an open dialogue with us. We're looking for viewer interaction, engagement and input because we want to explore these with our viewers. I encourage your viewers to ask questions before, during and after each of the discussion, open the debate. We will have polling questions that we will look at in the panels. And this is a new area that we have to explore together. OK, um, so what is planned so far? I mean, what, what's the first panel discussion going to be focused on? It's an ecosystem 5G. Where do you play? What, what is the value chain position you need to take? What are the use cases you could explore? And then we'll explore how the 5G services themselves impact what you need to do in BSS, at least at the conceptual level. How you need to evolve your charging, what new business model you should be looking at, how can you deal with co-creation and partners, what does network slicing mean? So the kind of first series you want is, is actually around the 5G ecosystem of what it means for us overall. And are there any other topics already lined up for the series? We do want to look at how we support flexible service creation. Uh, it's not about charging and rating alone, of course. It's about how we enable those service for monetization. So we want to look at the function, what should be there, what you should design, how you transform to this. This is a stepwise transformation. OK, well, I mean, this is a very timely series of programs. Uh, there's been a lot of focus in the past few years uh, on the rollout of 5G network infrastructure, but it's absolutely critical that service providers have the best tools and strategies at hand to build the best 5G business possible. Jason, thanks very much for joining us today and kickstarting the conversation. Thanks, Ray.